Um, and I think that that is a really important thing for us to understand about this issue and about a whole lot of other issues that we sidestep in Alberta because we're afraid of having wicked conversations. And one of the reasons that I say that is because largely, in my personal view, this is not really about religion. Okay? It is about civil society. Okay? The focus of the particular conversation is one denomination or another denomination. But really, this is not about religious freedom. I make the argument to the contrary, okay, that there is less religious freedom because we have separate school education than if we did not have separate school education. Okay? Because to the extent religion exists in our community, okay, Jews have less opportunity than Roman Catholics because Jews can't create Jewish separate school systems. Mormons have less religious freedom than Protestants because Mormons can't create a Mormon Protestant, uh, a Mormon separate school district. And on the other hand, I would hate to see a situation where we could walk into a voting booth on the day of municipal elections and say, which of 15 separate school boards do you want to vote for? Do you want to vote for the Jewish school trustees or the Catholic school trustees or the Mormon school trustees or the Hindu school trustees? To me, we should not be establishing one faith okay, if we're not prepared to treat other faiths on the same basis and we shouldn't bring all faiths into the government of the community. So with that said, I've got these two issues and I want to go back to Morinville. Okay. No matter what the people of Greater St. Albert say, Theirs is a public school jurisdiction. There is nothing in the Constitution of Canada, and there is nothing in the School Act, and there is nothing in any judicial decision that gives them to the right to rely on the accident of history that they started out as a Catholic Francophone community and say, we get to carry forward to 2011 what were the social circumstances of 1886. There is nothing in the Constitution or in the School Act or in any judicial decision that gives them protection. They are a public school jurisdiction. That's the first point. And if anybody wants me to elaborate on that at any point, and I won't do it this evening, but if you want me to cite ref sections of the School Act, or decisions or the Constitution, send me an email message and I'll send the references back to you. Okay. The first thing is there's nothing to rely on. The second thing is there's a period of time when St. Albert Public Catholic Public School Division did not exist. Between the mid-40s and the late 50s, okay, it was actually amalgamated with Sturgeon School Division. Okay. And that thing which existed in 1886 to 1947 ceased to exist altogether. Okay? So they can hardly claim an unbroken history that connects them back to 1886. Okay? Because for 11 or 12 years they didn't exist at all as the Greater St. Albert that we know today that were part of Sturgeon School Division. So the third thing is whether or not they can decline to serve residents who live inside their boundaries and send them somewhere else. Okay? That's what political scientists call an instrumental decision okay, that rejects substance. Okay? And what they mean simply is that Greater St. Albert is saying, as a matter of administrative convenience to us, go somewhere else. Okay? And if that extinguishes your democratic rights, c'est la vie. Okay? They are suggesting to people who live in Morinville and are residents of Greater St. Albert that you should take your kids to another school jurisdiction and get the education there. Suppose the education is just across the street from the Morinville town boundary. Okay? I mean, suppose Sturgeon had a school built 10 blocks away from your house. I would still say that that is unacceptable for these reasons. 
when you leave the jurisdiction you're a resident of and go to another jurisdiction, you have no right to education in that jurisdiction. If the jurisdiction takes you, and Sturgeon has said, we welcome you, and I believe they would welcome the people of Morinville. But the fact remains that if the people of Morinville go to a Sturgeon school division, uh, a Sturgeon school, they're going there as the guests of Sturgeon and on the sufferance of Sturgeon. And if there were acreage subdivisions built up around that school, that put enrollment pressure on that school, Sturgeon would be legally obliged to say to the people of Morinville, sorry, we must serve our resident <coughs> pupils who are in these new acreage subdivisions. We no longer have room for your kids. And the parents of Morinville would not have any right to say, the kids have been coming here for one year or five years or eight years, they're entitled to finish their education here. That's problem number one. And problem number two is that even if the kids went to, Moore, uh, went to Sturgeon and stayed there and completed their education, Donna would not be able to vote for the trustees who make the decisions about the election, uh, about the education of her kids. Because Donna's kids might be in the Sturgeon school, but Donna does not become an elector of the Sturgeon School Division. So she's cut off from the rights that are available to her as a citizen to stand for election as a trustee, or at least to vote for the trustees who are going to make decisions about the education of her kids. And basically, what Sturgeon is saying is, as a matter of administrative convenience, go somewhere else. The democracy of all of this is really unimportant. Okay. You don't need to have right of access if it's there, if it's convenient, the fact that it's there and convenient is good enough. You don't need to vote for trustees. Democracy is not really a big deal. And to me, that's unacceptable. So I think G Sacred has problems that they are a public school division and nothing gives them special comfort because the word Catholic is in their name. That is nothing more than an homage to history. It has no constitutional substance, no legal substance, no judicial substance. Second thing is that every alternative they proposed to Donna and her friends is an instrumental decision okay, that denies the value of democracy. And the third thing is that it's bad public policy. Okay. We want little kids to be educated rubbing shoulders with each other. And we want all of the adults in the community to walk into one room and make decisions about all the kids in the community. I mean, we work that old African adage almost to death. It takes a whole village to raise a child. Okay? The Africans don't say, and some of the villagers should go into one hut and make some decisions about some of the kids, while other villagers go into another hut and make other decisions about other of the kids. All the adults in the community should share the common task of looking after the education of all of the kids in the community. And that's the way it should work. So first, they don't have a legal leg to stand on. Secondly, they're being instrumental and they're denying the value of democracy. And thirdly, they are doing something that is fragmenting communities. It is not knitting communities together. And for all of those reasons, it should come to an end. People should talk to their MLAs about it. Okay? And talk to them in a nice way. Okay? But as citizens, we have a right to be insistent. Okay? We have a right to give our MLAs what we know to be knowledge. Okay? And we have a right to be insistent. They have a right to make whatever decision they will make after the conversation with us <coughs> and our members. And they're accountable for that decision the next time an election rolls around. But this whole process requires that we should interact with our MLAs more than we do. Okay? And we should interact with our neighbors as well. We should be talking to our neighbors. We should be doing it respectfully. If somebody says, I am a person of faith and I am concerned about whether or not this compromises religious freedom, okay, the answer should be religious freedom 
for believers or for unbelievers is important. Let's have the conversation through to an end that honors religious freedom and also honors the fact that no church should be an established church in this province. It just shouldn't be. I could get wound up on this and go on and I'm going to stop so that we can have a question and answer but we'll learn more from that. Thank you both very much for inviting me. And if anybody help, wants to help me on the other task of disestablishing separate school education, come and sign my book afterwards and give me an email address and we'll work we'll on that as well. Assembly website. 